pure God power. Get everything you ever wanted and live the life of your dreams. The Master's Course. Copyright 2010 by Richard Lee McKim Jr. All rights reserved. Let the quest for knowing begin. Vibrational Associations While it is true what you think about on purpose are your active vibrations, you may be getting triggered into thinking about things that you don't want. These thought activators are associations that you have. Remembering that everything in your experience has meaning, good or bad, you may have some things in your experience that cause you to think of unpleasant thoughts automatically by association. We deliberately create associations in our experience for things we like and want, which is the purpose of mementos and keepsakes. They keep reminding you, bringing back into mind, of things that you want to remember, make a member again of your currently active vibrational group. This is a very useful tool. This would be like the vision board that was mentioned in the hit movie, The Secret. Or it could be a picture from a vacation you took, or a trophy from high school. These pictures and other things that remind you of great times not only will remember the actual event and people themselves, but you will also remember the feelings of happiness and joy which will do their magic in your current experience every time they are remembered. However, this works for the good and the bad. So by the same token and the same reasons, if something reminds you of bad times or hard times, or it makes you remember something that is still unpleasant, then by all means, get it out of your sight and out of your experience. By getting it out of sight, it will soon be out of mind and no longer eliciting in your current experience. Sometimes, people surround themselves with things that remind them of failures, times that were unpleasant, or bring up feelings of guilt or anger or depression. They do this to maintain their state of mind. As long as those reminders are there, they will continue to remember all those feelings and vibrations in their current experience and keep them from any different experience now than they had then. When you have the same resonant vibrations now that you had then, you will elicit from your world the same things now that you elicited then. It is just simple logic. Sometimes those memories can be deceiving. It might have been a picture or trinket from better times. But you remember your vibrations are always from the meaning. If the meaning is that those days are gone and will never happen again, then the meaning is negative. And even though the picture is of good times, it reminds you of bad feelings. So either change the meaning or change the pictures. Subconscious meanings could be active in your experience and you would never consciously know it. Sometimes you will have created associations in your experience to good and bad things without realizing it. Just like if I started to hum a tune, you might recall the words. Or if I say the words, you might recall the tune. They are associated and connected to one another. A song may bring back memories from school or your first love. They have become associated and connected with one another. In this same way, sometimes feelings have been connected to something that you don't realize. It is easy to realize that a picture of the person you hate makes you feel bad feelings. But what about your living room couch? Have you ever been feeling really good and as soon as you enter the house, you just sort of lost that great feeling? You think that was an accident? Remember that there's no such things as accidents, so that couldn't have been the reason. Then what was it? Did you have an argument in the living room with somebody that was particularly memorable? If so, your unhappy feelings may have become attached to the picture of your living room in your mind. So that at the subconscious level, whenever you are in that room, it suddenly brings you down. It reactivates those same feelings, but because it is subconscious, below your conscious notice, 
you don't really understand why. Interestingly, however, the argument doesn't even have to have been in the living room to make that connection. You could have been on the phone pacing back and forth when you subconsciously set the feeling to the area. You could have subconscious triggers all over the place, activating your moods and vibrations from good to bad, or from bad to good, without you even realizing it. What can you do about subconscious triggers? Bring them to the conscious level where you can deal with them. The way to do this is to take a conscious inventory of everything in your life experience consciously and root out the subconscious rascals that way. I say rascals because you don't want to raise the emotional level or volume on this. There's no need. Think of this as a Sherlock Holmes mystery that you are going to solve. Make it fun. Be systematic in your approach in order to cover everything. I would start on your normal path through the house, starting at the front door. As you open the door, what does this view, the look and the things that you see, remind you of? Do you have any special memories in there, good or bad? Was it the room where you had the Christmas tree, or the one where you had the big argument, or both? A great technique for rooms is to move things around. When you move the furniture into a new pattern and new locations, it breaks up the old pattern and the memory ties you had to it. That is why it is always so much fun to redecorate because everything seems so fresh and new afterwards because it is. Would a new color of paint change the mood? Any old memories that were triggering have been deleted. Even if they were good, they may have still been burdening you with old vibrations that are no longer relevant. You can really stir things up by moving stuff from room to room and mixing them together in completely new and different ways. Look at each and every picture and memento and thing in sight. What does it remind you of and what does it really mean to you? Whatever it really means is what it is automatically activating in your experience without you realizing it. If it is bad, can you change the meaning? Would it have the same meaning if it were in a different room or place? If not, then discard it or pack it away. This same process could be used at work, in your yard, your car, or your hobbies, or whatever else is part of your experience. Maybe you should change cars or even your home or neighborhood. If you really want to take this exercise over the top, then as you are examining each item, give it a good no, a great meaning while you're at it. Why do you have that picture hanging on the wall anyway? If it is someone important to you, then say, I have this picture on the wall because I really appreciate this person, and when I see their picture, it reminds me of all the wonderful experiences we had together. How about that thing of a bob on the table? Why is it there? Is it useful? You could say, I have this thing here because it is really useful, and besides, I got a really good deal on it. I enjoy having it in this room. Perfect. If you do that with everything in every aspect of the room, you have done a great job. Now everything is vibrating with positive meaning for you. You will actually be able to feel it now when you enter the room. Even though it will be happening below your conscious awareness, it will still brighten your day. You may even be in a down mood but when you enter that room, somehow you just feel better. And from a place of feeling better, you are eliciting better. Can you imagine if you have given positive and important meaning to everything in your experience? You could be walking around in the vibrational energy of great meanings all the time. And that is a great feeling. If something doesn't have a bad meaning or a good meaning, and you don't give it a good meaning, it is meaningless in your experience. It becomes unneeded clutter in your experience. You don't need the meaningless in your reality. One of the most powerful associations you will ever have in your life is one that most people don't even think about or realize. That is your name. What does it mean when someone calls you by your name? Is it good? Do you have a nickname? Do different people call you different names? Which ones do you love and which ones do you hate? If you make a major change in your life such as moving or changing jobs or getting divorced, it might be an ideal time to change the name you go by. Your new name would be the new 
more capable you. It's the you that's got it going on. That's why people have nicknames. It's a different identity. When they're called by that name, they put on a different hat. They're a different person, usually more fun, etc. That's all good. I just want you to take inventory of your experience and see for yourself what meanings you have that are shaping your reality and life. To continue, go to How to Use Your God Power, Chapter Number 11, Segment Number 29. Let your quest for knowing continue.